Ong. We are blessed to have men like you who are willing to stand and encourage and use your gift and your abilities. I uh, it's a blessed privilege to be here once again and to just say thank you and welcome to those who are tuning in online and especially say thank you to our media ministry. Uh, lesson last week has gotten over a thousand hits. Uh, and I just want to say to those who are online, who are on Facebook Live, if you would, just invite your friends. Have a watch party. Um, we've got a message from God. I want to say to our members who uh, in garrison, uh, garrison means that you're in a place now just for, uh, in a holding pattern. I just want to say uh, I miss you. I love you. And, you know, sometimes... Uh, things are taken from us to really show us how much we miss or how much we appreciate. Sometimes you have to miss some things to see how much you really appreciate uh, individuals or situations or things. I, um, I'm encouraged by uh, the calls and um, the calling to one another. I want to say uh, to our elders in training who have been busy contacting and calling members. And uh, I, so if you haven't gotten your call yet, uh, you're on the list. It's just taking some time. And we have to give each other time, especially in times like these. Uh, we need to talk and communicate with one another. I want to say welcome to those who are here this morning, the skeleton crew. Uh, who's here to uh, lend support to this broadcast. It's amazing how life has changed over the last week. And I, I guess the good news is, is that it's going to get better. It's going to get better. Uh, we've just got to trust in the Lord. I just hope that I'll be able to uh, give you a little uh, spiritual medicine to just kind of encourage you and uplift you uh, during these difficult times. Of course, during these difficult times, there are some tough decisions that we have to make as the people of God. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, the creator, the sustainer, and the giver of all life, to the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, we give thanks to you for allowing us this privilege to acknowledge him and to honor him and his supreme sacrifice. We acknowledge, Father, his life. who came and showed us the way. We pray and ask, Father, that you will give us the courage and the wisdom to surrender ourselves unto you. We humble ourselves before you as we worship you in spirit and truth. We pray and ask, Father, that our hearts and our minds will be open, that we will receive, Father, this message from you. We pray and ask, Father, that in our time of self-examination today, that you will speak to our hearts, that you will open our minds to understanding and answer the call of revival. We ask, Father, for your forgiveness of the many times and ways that we have neglected the opportunities and the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We pray, Father, and ask that you will guide us through your word today so that we may gain a great understanding of the things that we are called to do. We ask, Father, that you bless this message. In Jesus' most holy and divine name we pray. 
Amen. Our lesson is titled, a very interesting lesson title, What Do You Do When You Do Not Know or You Don't Know What to Do? What do you do when you don't know what to do? I shared this title with an individual, and he says, well, if you don't know, you better ask somebody. That was a very good response. But our lesson is lifted from 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Let me be, remind you, let me remind you that last week our lesson was from 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Today we're going to remain in Chronicles, 2 Chronicles and we're going to look at chapter 20. As we go to chapter 20, we find an individual who is known as a good king by the name of Jehoshaphat. And it's interesting, in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, beginning in verse number 3, the Bible says, it says, And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord, and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. It's interesting that when we look at that text, we need to get a background of the story. Because many times over we get different snippets of certain things, and we don't get an understanding as to why he really feared. Jehoshaphat is known as the good king. He was a good individual, but yet he compromised. He wanted everybody to be okay around him. And of course, he's reminded of his experience in 2 Chronicles and chapter 19. The Bible says in verse 1, it says, Then Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned safely to his house in Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Hanai, the seer went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? Therefore the wrath of the Lord is upon you. And nevertheless, good things are found in you, that you have removed the wooden images from the land, and have prepared your heart to seek the God, seek God. It's interesting how here's an individual who finds himself or finds himself doing a good thing, at least he thought, but yet he had compromised his faith. He compromised his relationship with God. How can you do one good thing on one hand and then you do another thing? And I hope God will be pleased with that. I believe that this is where we are as people today. We have created a certain mindset that as long as I can do this good thing over here, I can do this bad thing and I can still come out okay. God is calling us. He is calling the nation. He's calling the world to recognize him as the one and only true God. The Bible says that he feared. And of course, he feared simply because, number one, God was examining his life. God had placed him in a situation to where, okay, if you're going to seek my face, you're going to have to humble yourself before me. But many individuals are failing to understand how God is working in the situation today. We're looking for answers, just like they were looking for answers. But the key phrase that we find in 2 Chronicles is verse number 12. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verse number 12, Jehoshaphat now is praying to God. He is praying to God. He has called the people together, and he is praying to God. And we find in verse number 12, he says, Oh, our God, will you not judge them 
For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. You see, this was not a time for a weak faith. This was not a time for a weak prayer life. This was not a time for him to be lollygagging around spiritually. This was a time, this was a call. Here they were surrounded by the enemy. Here they were in a hopeless situation. Here they were about to be overran or overtaken. And here he is seeking God, seeking the wisdom of God. And he began with prayer. But he humbled himself before God. And he recognized that he was limited in his own power. But it's interesting that as he humbled himself, God will always raise up someone to share a message, a challenge. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verse number 15, 2 Chronicles chapter 12, chapter 20 and verse number 15. It's interesting in verse number 14, it says that the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jeel, the son of Mataniah, and he was a Levite. Now, it's interesting why that is there. A Levite, one who was responsible for the worship of God's people. One who was a worship leader, one who had a responsibility, one who had not only a responsibility, but he was also held accountable for his worship to the Lord and leading others to worship. He rose up and in verse number 15, he did this in the midst of the assembly and he said, listening all of you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you king Jehoshaphat. Thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, this great group of people who have surrounded you from all fronts. And because of this great multitude for the battle, listen up, it's not yours, it's God. I believe that many of us who claim to know God are asking ourselves the question, what it is that we should be doing right now. We want to get back to normal. We want to do all of these interesting things. But let us take a moment and put things in perspective. Let's place things in perspective and get an idea as to what is actually happening to us. You see, all of a sudden, one day, Everything that we considered important to us has been suspended. Graduations have been suspended. Jobs have been suspended. Sports have been suspended. Shopping has been suspended. And the other day they suspended non-essential things, such as getting your hair did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. getting your nails done but it's interesting how the government stepped in and said that these things are no longer essential and so we shut them down but it's interesting how they gave a list of things that are essential that's going to remain open but the church was not included mm. the body of Christ was set aside as a matter of fact, one state is arresting individuals who desire to meet together. And we say, yes, I, we, we got to protect ourselves and all of those things. But you know what is interesting, what I found interesting, is that we're sitting around counting the dead instead of looking forward to the living. We're spending a great deal of time, oh, they had this many, this thousand, or six thousand, six thousand people who were infected, six thousand people... <laughs> Only 200 deaths. We're sitting counting deaths instead of counting those who have survived. Here's another interesting thing. They said that, which is non-essential, the church was included in that. 
but they kept the liquor stores open. Mm. Mm. Let's put this in perspective here. Is that essential? Let's look again, because here we are in a situation where people are desiring to get back to normal. This has become the reality in all of our lives. I want to get back to normal. I want to get back to that job that I used to hate. <laughs> that job that I was a spy going to every day that, that just, just, just grated on me. I want to get back to it. That's normal. But see, what has happened is that we realize now that normal, the wickedness in the world had become normal. And we want to get back to it. And then we're wondering, when will this be over? As I mentioned last week, this is a plague. And this plague is not going to be over until God says it's over. Yes, we can do what we need to do to, to maintain our health. Yes, we can do to maintain the things that we need to do. Yes, we can watch what we're doing, what we're eating, what we're putting on, how we go about our daily tasks. Yes, we have to be cautious in all of those things. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is, what is the purpose for all of this? And people are looking for answers. But the question that we've got to answer what do you do when you don't know what to do? You've got to make some decisions. Did you know that all crises, all conflicts, I don't care with who, whatever crisis that you face, whatever conflicts that you have, they are all designed to change us. And being of God's elect, whatever crisis come upon us, whatever conflicts we encounter, they are designed to make us a better people, not bitter. And so what we've got to do is we've got to learn how to handle things. You see, what we do and how we handle that which has come upon us will always determine the outcome. How we handle and what we do with the trials, the crises, the conflicts, whatever comes upon us, how we handle those things will determine the outcome. Get for me John chapter 16 and verse number 33. You see, as a child of God, I need to realize that trials are going to come. James tells us that in James chapter 2 and verse James chapter 1 and verse number 2. Crises are going to come. Conflicts are going to come. They are a given for the world. As long as you have people in the world, you're going to have crises and conflicts. But Jesus said this. John 16 in verse number 33 says what? These things I have spoken to you. These things I have spoken to you. That in me. That in who? In me. In who? In me. In me what? You may have peace. You have what? Peace. Peace. Read on. In the world you will have tribulation. In the world you're going to have what? Tribulation. Tribulation. That's trial. In the world you're going to have what? Tribulation. That's crisis. In the world you're going to have what? Tribulation. Conflict. You are going to have those things in the world. He has spoken this to us, but what? But be of good cheer. Be of good courage. Take courage, says some translation. Why? I have overcome I the world. I have overcome the world. And if you are in Christ, you are an overcomer. If you're not an overcomer, you need to check your relationship with God. You see, all things work together. And this is going to trouble some people right now. Because I'm speaking to a troubled people. I'm speaking to a troubled people. I want you to pay close attention to the text. Now, we're familiar with the text, but when crises come, this is the last thing we want to hear. Romans chapter 8 and verse number 28 says what? And we know. E oh, things. hold up. And we what? And we know. Either you know or you don't know. Either you know or you don't know. And if you don't know, yeah, you're right. You better ask somebody. 
Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Keep reading. And we know. And we know. That all things. Not some things, but what? All, all things, things. What? Work together. They work together. For good. For good. Whoa, 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 whoa. They work together for what? For good. Not bad. No, for good. For good. Read on. To those who love God. Wait, wait, wait. To who? To those who love God. This is not to the butcher, nor the candlestick maker, nor the baker. To those. It is only to those who what? Who love God. Who love God. Now, if your relationship to God is not right, what it should be, you're going to have problems with what's going on right now. You see, this is just a checkup from the heart up. This is a call for us to check ourselves because this thing has come upon us and God has a purpose for it. And God has a purpose for it. Romans chapter 8, verse number 28. And we know. And we know. That all things. That all things. Work together for work good. Work together for good. To those who love God. To those who love God. To those who are the called. And to those who what? Are the called. Whoa, 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 whoa. To those who what? Are the called. Well, are the call. Either you are part of the call or you're not. This is predicated on the fact of those who love God. Those who love God are of the call. If you do not have the relationship with God, you have not answered the call. If your relationship is raggedy, you are, you have not answered the call. As a matter of fact, you are spending more time running from God instead of running to him. Now I want you to go back to the text again. I'm going to sit here for just a moment because we're in the midst of trials and tribulations now. And this is the word of God is going to minister to us because God has a reason for that which has come upon us. And so what we want to do is give you some understanding. Now, let's do it again now. Romans chapter 8, verse number 28. And we know. And we know things. that all things. Say that with me. All things. things. Those of you that should have been a loud shout in the world, should have been a loud shout coming from your house that says what? All things. That's right. Either you believe it or you don't. Read on. For the good. Work together for the good. Who love God. To those who love God. To all. And to those who are the call. According to his purpose. According to his purpose. Remember the Levite who stood up. And told Jehoshaphat, God called him and had him stand before the people to give them a word of encouragement. Friends, let me say this to you. Yes, this crisis is upon us, but there's an understanding that needs to take place. This is a call of revival. This is a call for restoration. I heard an individual say the other day, he said, hey, hey, hey preacher, um, when this is over, I'm going to come back to your church. I mean, you expect me to be there. What do you think the chances of him coming? Not likely. You got individuals right now that say, man, <laughs> I'm going to get myself together. I'm going to get myself together. It reminds me of a, a classmate of mine. We used to go over to the, uh, uh, to the, the county, the uh, state fair over in Tampa, Florida. And uh, we, we were just young teenagers, and, and we all had, had, had some kind of way. We had found us some wine, and we got to drinking and having a good time. Yeah, we were just teenagers having fun, as we thought. And we decided we were going to ride the Ferris wheel. Bad mistake. Bad mistake. And I was in the bucket up, 
up behind him and, and, and I won't call his name because he's probably listening in. And, and, and I was in the bucket behind him and we went up on that first one. We were laughing and having a good time. All of a sudden he got sick and things started moving faster and he started yelling out. He started screaming. He started praying to God. He said, just let me down one more time. Just let me. I'll never drink another drop. I'll never do this. I mean, he was just crying out to the Lord. And finally the came, ride came to a stop and he was all messed up and the ones who were before him, you know what happened. And guess what? Just as soon as he got the opportunity, guess what he did? Got some more Mad Dog 2020. For those of you, some of you know what I'm talking about. And even to this very day, He's struggling with alcohol problems. You see, many times over, we don't realize what is actually happening to us. And see, everybody's a seeking a temporary fix. We just want a temporary fix so that we can get back to the normality of wickedness. And see, we're so busy sanitizing, disinfecting everything. We're cleaning this. We're cleaning that. Oh, don't touch me. Oh, no, this, that, and other. No, oh, okay. Oh, you do have any more Lysol? What, you run about those sanitary wipes. We need those. We need this. But who's cleaning up their soul is the question. You see, many times over, we focus on the wrong thing instead of on the right thing. And this is what is happening to us. And as a result, we're going to miss the call. You see, this plague that has come upon us has reached in and just snatched hope from the lives of so many. Get for me Proverbs chapter 13 and verse number 12. In Proverbs 13 and verse number 12, Solomon writes, Solomon writes, Hope deferred. Hope deferred. Makes the heart sick. Makes the heart sick. Read on. But when the desire comes. But when the desire comes. It is a tree of life. It is a tree of life. It's a blessing. Read on. He who despises he the who word. He who despises the word going to be what? Will be destroyed. Will be destroyed. And what? But he who fears the He who fears. He who respects. He who respects. He who is reverent for the word. Toward the word will be what? Will be rewarded. Be rewarded. Now let's, let's, let's sit here for just a moment. Don't run off too fast. Hope deferred. That word hope means postpone. That word deferred means delayed. It's being hindered right now, put off. As a child of God, I should be hoping. I should maintain my hope. What is the anchor for my soul? And as long as I maintain my hope, I'm going to be made well. You see, hard times, troubling times do not last forever. But tough people do. Tough people, determined people, hopeful people. You see, that hope that has been deferred, that hope that you thought you had, you see, it's been hindered. It's been put off. You've put it on the back burner. You've suspended it. You were that one who ran around and because God gave you some material blessing, you had to tell, tell the world, won't he do it? <laughs> won't he do it? Yeah. Yeah. I got a big job, big pain. Oh, won't he do it? But now, where is your hope? What do you believe? Are you being challenged? You have deferred your hope, and so now you have found yourself spiritually ill. Well, I'm not going to be able to go to the prom. I'm not going to be able to do this. 
your hope has been deferred. You see, you are now recognizing what's really important. I want you to look at that. Despises the word. Despises. An individual say, I don't, I don't despise God's word. Let me, let me help you out. You hate it when it challenges you with correction. You have an attitude of disdain when it calls you to live right. You can't bear it when God calls you to stand. You're repulsed by it when it challenges your lifestyle. You're repulsed when God's word says you need to repent. And so all of this is happening to us. And so the question remains, what do you do when you don't know what to do? You see, if you're depending on God, something's going to happen to you right now. If you are depending on God to get you through this, if you are depending on God to get you through this, if you are depending on God to, to help us through this situation, you've got to realize, and I'm going to talk to Christians right now, that God is depending on you. God is depending on his children, on his people to make a difference in these trying times. You see, the heathen can't do it. No political figure can do it. No mass army can do it. I don't care how strong you are. No one can do this. God is calling on his people. We are the ones that he is calling upon to bring about a change and a healing in the land. Let's go back to 2 Chronicles chapter 7. I see it floating through the internet on your Facebook page. Won't he do it? But he's going to do it through us. I want you to pay close attention to this. Pick it up in verse number uh, 13, Brother Roy. When I shut up heaven uh -huh. and there is no rain mm -hmm. or command the locusts to devour the land mm -hmm. or send pestilence among my people. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Send pestilence among my people. That's, that's, that's plague. Well, I don't think this is from the Lord. That's from the devil. Wait, 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 wait. See, you don't know your Bible. Whatever the adversary does to us, he had to get God's permission to do it. You need to read Job 1, Job 2, 3, 4, and 5. Read the whole book. Second Chronicles chapter 7 has the key. Now remember this thing is not going to be over until God says it's over. This is how it's going to happen. We can either prolong it or we can aid or be used by God to shut it down. I want you to pay close attention to the next verse. Read. If my people. If my people. Who are called by my, my name. people. God didn't say the world. He's showing some ownership here. If my people, you Christian, you God fearer, you true worshiper of God, if my people who are what? Called. called whoa, wait a minute. Didn't we just read something about called in Romans chapter 8 and verse number 28? That's right who are called according to his purpose. You see, in the midst of this crisis, we're going to ask the question, 
Where are the people of God? Where are the people of God? And I know some wise spirits are, we here? No, 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 you speak for yourself. You got to speak for yourself. Where are you? That was a question that God asked Adam. Where are you? Even though God knew where he was located, knew where he was located, he also knew where he was spiritually. You see, Adam thought he was talking about location, but God was talking about his spiritual well-being. Where are you? God gave him an opportunity to come clean. God is giving us an opportunity to do what is right. If my people, read on. Who are called by my name. Who are called by what? My name. My name. By my authority. Read on. Will humble themselves. Oh, look at that word, will. That's emphatic. He didn't say, uh, if possible, no will. That's emphatic. If my people who are called by, who my, called name, by my name will humble themselves, will humble themselves and do what? And pray. pray. <laughs> Read on. And seek my seek face. Seek my face. Read on. And turn from their wicked And ways. repent. God is calling. His people, his church to repentance. No, no, we can't go back to the normal that we just came from. You see, we've reached a level of wickedness that has become normal. And we're wondering how is this going to work out? My people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray and seek my face, then I, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin. And I want you to notice the last part. He's going to forgive those who turn, his people. You see that? Mm -hmm. His people. He's going to forgive us when we repent. And then he will do what? And heal the, heal the land. land. If there ever was a time for evangelism, that time is right now. Christians need to be who we have called, who have, we have been called to be. Christians need to stand up. And so we need to ask ourselves, what time is it? What time is it, Christian? Is it time for sackcloth and ashes? Is it time for, for us to, to pray and fast? Is it time for us to stand up and be true to the God we believe and trust in? It's important that you and I understand that it is not going to be over until God says it's over. And we as God's people have got to realize that we've got a part in the process. And I can only be responsible for my part. I can't be re responsible for yours. You've got your part to do. Brother Hubbard, what is sackcloth and ashes? Glad you asked. Daniel chapter 9, verse number 3. It says, Then I set my face toward the Lord God to make requests and by prayer and supplication with fasting sackcloth and ashes. Matthew chapter 7, verse 20 through 22. So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move and nothing, absolutely, positively, nothing will be impossible to you. And you see, what has happened is that we as Christians, we have become so water weak until we can't do anything. We are following the world instead of the world following us. God has given us an opportunity. He's given us an opportunity to turn this thing right side up. 
That's right. We got more Christians running scared than anything right now because they don't understand. Sackcloth and ashes was used as a public sign of repentance back during the Old Testament times. A public sign of repentance and humility before God. Remember Jonah? When they went to the people of Nineveh. Then we find Daniel. We also find over in Esther. Oh, I love Esther, the book. Remember Mordecai? It was in a time of national disaster. And Esther the queen called for a time of prayer and fasting, sackcloth and ashes. She was making her decision to go before the king. And she said those great words, if I die, I die. If I die, I die. But remember the words of Mordecai, for such a time as this. Think not. If it didn't come from you, the deliverance of the Jews did not come from you, Esther. God already has another plan. He has somebody in mind. But he's given you the opportunity. You need to take it. You need to take this opportunity and use it wisely. Also need to point out, and some, now some, some of you say, well, I, 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 my health won't allow me to fast. And that's, I understand that. I understand that. Yes, and, and, and you need to eat. If you, your health was not allow you to, you know, God, God doesn't expect stupidity. Okay? But he does expect us to be managers. You may not be able to fast because your health won't allow you to do that. I need to put that in there because it'll get me a lawsuit because my aunt, she heard your message and she started fasting and she had diabetes and she died. Okay. I'm going to sue you. <laughs> so I need to give this, this disclaimer here. Well, did she pray? Well, no, she didn't pray, but she was fasting though and she was complaining about she couldn't eat nothing because she was trying to fast. <laughs> it's funny how people do things. But do you pray? Do you pause and focus on prayer? How many times a day are you praying for this? How many times are you praying and offering yourself up as a living sacrifice to Almighty God to change you? To make a difference. Are you the one? Are you that one person who can make a difference? Remember when God called Abraham to go over to Lot while he was over in Sodom and Gomorrah? Abraham stood there and he said, If you have this many, would you bypass us? Oh, yeah, okay. What about this many? What about 10? God said, if there's 10 people, I'll relent. He couldn't even find 10 people in that city. You see, you and I need to understand how critical times are. So the question remains, what do you do when you don't know what to do? You see, the answer is found in the text. We don't know what to do, but we're going to keep our eye on you. We're going to keep our eye on you. This is a call of revival. The church needs a revival. God is reviving his church. He's shaking the church up right now. We're finding more and more individuals now who had a problem coming to worship. Now they want to come to worship. You see, God is working on you. He's turning this thing around. He's turning it upside down. He's challenging you. There are those who want to play with their faith. 
just want to just get by instead of being transformed. But Jesus got a message for you in John 13 and verse number 17. He says, if you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. So the question remains, can you stand to be blessed? If God took roll call of every individual that belongs to him, who've named the name of him, he's calling you to a revival, would your name be on that roll? Would you raise your hand? Lord, I need a revival. Begin it with me. Start it with me. I'm the one. Start it right here. Can we truly say that we need to be restored? I need to be restored, Lord. I humble myself before you. I have sackcloth and ashes. I've humbled myself before the multitudes because I want you to use me. I realize I've not been what I could be or should be. Now I know. Are you that individual? I just want this to be over. So I'll just step out there and do it and just get it over. God knows your heart, yes. Maybe you like your house of fat. You want to play both ends against the middle. You want to be all right with everybody. You don't want to take a stand. You want to compromise. This is not the time for a compromised faith. Now that you know these things, you'll be blessed if you do them. For those of you who are listening in the audience, we always offer the opportunity of salvation. And this is an opportunity for you to check your salvation, to see if you're right in the sight of God. I know that we are coming to you uh, live by uh, internet and all of those things, but it's important that you understand the salvation of God and, 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 and you need to check your salvation. That's why this is here. For you to have this checkup, to get yourself right in the sight of God. You see, you've got to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, and there's only one way to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can't just pray Jesus into your heart. There's no such scripture. Now, if there's no such scripture that tells you to pray Jesus into your heart, how can you say you've obeyed God? I'm just asking. Just asking. Well, 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 that's your interpretation, Brother Hubbard. That's your interpretation. I know what I feel. God never told us to feel anything concerning our salvation. These things were written so that you may know. That's uh, 1 John chapter 4, I believe, 4 uh, and verse 13 or 5 verse 19, 4, 4, 5 and verse 14. But the whole idea is that you've got to believe this word. You've got to have faith. Hebrews 11 and verse 6, without faith, it is impossible to please God. He who comes to God must believe that he exists and he rewards those who diligently seek after him. We've heard a lot about seeking God's faith. Face. You also need to repent. That means that you need to not just suspend things for a while. You need to turn away from it. You need to confess Christ before others. And then you need to be baptized into Christ. Mark 16, 16. Pay close attention. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. He who believeth not shall be condemned. Well, I got baptized. Well, were you saved before you got baptized? Well, yeah. That's not in the Bible. Salvation is always on the other side of baptism. Well, what do you say? I did get baptized. So what? I'm, I'm, my baptism is no good. I'm going to teach you the Bible. You need to make a decision. Either man is right. And the Bible is wrong, or the Bible is right, and man is wrong. I'm going to teach it like it's written. Well, you know, that was back then, this is now. Well, you know, it's interesting how we have this mindset, but so many individuals will come up to a stop sign. There's not but one way to interpret a stop sign. I know you might roll up there and say, you, you, you know, young guns that roll up there, it means skid tires on pavement. That is not interpretation of that sign. 
I remember years ago when I was young and, and we were driving down through uh, the, the backwoods of uh, 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 Ocala, Florida and driving along and at late night and you're driving along and you get hit this intersection and you turn your lights out. You don't want to stop. You just turn your lights out to see if another car is coming. May God help you if the other fellow chooses to do the same thing. Isn't that something? That still did not change the interpretation of the stop sign. And then after you're baptized into Christ, you need to live a life of faithfulness in Christ. Now let me talk to the Christian for just a moment. I've said some things this morning that we all need to hear. Whatever we have encountered, it is not going to be over until God says it's over. And you and I are blessed to have a part in the process. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. We'd like to encourage you, if there's any way that we can encourage your life, bless your life, we'd like to have a song of encouragement, and we'd like to, for you to contact me. If there's anything that I can do, anything that we can do as a congregation uh, to minister to you, to help you for in further Bible assistance and also uh, prayer and study. And, and Brother Baldwin is going to come and lead us in a song uh, uh, of encouragement as you ponder and as you meditate. And I'll come back after the song and have a time of prayer. The pile hill come ringing through the land. Jesus calls for reapers. I must act to be. What will thou, O oh Master, hear? Am I send me? Oh, here am I. Lord, send me. Here am I. Ready at thy bidding, Lord, send me. There's a plant of cry, O oh, mourning souls distress, and the sigh of hearts who seek to find no rest. These are should my love and tender sympathy. Ready at thy bidding, here am I, send me. Oh, here am I. Oh, Lord, send me. Here am I. Ready at thy bidding, Lord, send me. Let us pray. Father, we give thanks to you for challenging our hearts and our minds. Even though, Father, we are being excluded from the ministry of presence, we know, Father, that you're there. That we are worship you in spirit and in truth that you've spoke to each and every heart that you've challenged us to examine ourselves and to make sure that we are in the faith to ensure father that we are part of the process that you intend to use to make a difference we pray and ask, Father, while we're under this plague, that you will give us courage to persevere. We pray and ask, Father, that as we surrender ourselves unto you, that you will use us to help another. That you will send us, Father, to others who are looking for you. We pray and ask, Father, in critical times like these, help us to know 
that we are the call according to your purpose. We ask, Father, for forgiveness. We ask, Father, for the courage to repent. To turn away from those things that are wicked. Those things that are unpleasing to you. And give us the courage and the wisdom to be true to you. We pray, Father, for our brother Jason. We pray, Father, for him. We pray that you strengthen, that you guide him, that you direct him. We pray, Father, and ask that you will continue to bless us with those things to be able to bless his life. We pray, Father, for so many who are struggling right now, both spiritually and physically. We pray, Father, that they will have the things that they stand in need of. We pray, Father, for our senior members. We pray and ask, Father, that you bless each and every one of them. And we pray, Father, and ask that you continue to guide and direct us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.